We're talking today with Dr. Gene Boomer. Welcome to the program. Thanks, Walt. Dr. Boomer, you've recently submitted an article to the magazine on the topic of today's feeding challenges, and you had some extra thoughts to share with us. What extra tips do you have for producers in times of tight milk feed margins? Well, the dairy industry is definitely facing plenty of challenges around the feeding of cows and heifers today, whether it's price, forage availability, variation in quality. Those are just a few that we're challenged with. But as the dairyman builds his action plan, I think I have four or five areas that he should at least consider when he's putting his long-term forage plan together. I'll first go over the individual points, and then we'll give you a little more information around each one of them. First, we need to value the feed ingredients for quality and consistency. And then we have to identify the most limiting nutrient in your ration. And then make educated guess around uh, your alfalfa decisions, because we're all forced to purchase alfalfa, and it is short supply, high price. And then improve feed bunk management. And finally, don't forget about your heifers. So first off, we'll move into the value feed ingredients for quality and consistency. I think you need to center your feeding strategy around rumen health and feed efficiency. We never want to fit, forget feed efficiency. And we need to aim for optimal fiber digestion and sustaining milk fat levels and preventing the health issues that come when we don't have enough fiber in our diets. And avoid cuts that save a dime today but will cost you a dollar tomorrow. A good example of this be buying less dense protein sources like maybe DDG, where a unit of protein is cheaper, but it's less digestible and in the long run results in poor feed efficiency. And a tenth of a point of feed efficiency is worth well over 50 cents a cow today at today's feed prices. And then I encourage you to use a reputable lab to test all your feed ingredients for nutrients and be aware of the variation. Test enough so that you're comfortable with the amount of variation of any given commodity or feed stuff. You don't need to test every load where you're going through lots of loads, but test enough that you're comfortable with the amount of variation between loads. And then identify your most limiting nutrient in your ration. For many in the West, energy is our most limiting nutrient. In many early lactation diets, this metabolizable energy is the most limiting nutrient. And use care when adding certain byproducts to rations as they can limit this metabolizable energy and your feed efficiency goes higher. Or in other words, they just eat more pounds of the total ration to get the amount of energy that the cows need. And then when it comes to purchasing alfalfa, many people are reducing the levels of alfalfa and increasing levels of corn silage in rations. And this has gained a lot of traction in certain areas of the country. But when this happens, we automatically change the decad levels in our ration as the amount of corn silage increases. So be aware of that because that can have an impact on butter fat and feed efficiency as well. So we recommend increasing the dietary potassium levels in our lactating rations to a minimum of 1.7 dry matter to rise the decad up to around a plus 35 to a plus 45 mill equivalents per 100 grams of dry matter. You have to use potassium carbonate. You can't get by using potassium chloride. It does not have the same effect as the potassium chloride. And then we want to remember we must monitor our ratio of potassium to magnesium. If we raise the potassium, we need to get the magnesium up to about 0.4% or about a 4 to 1 ratio. And then improve our feed bunk management is also an opportunity area. Formulate multiple TMRs to precisely meet the nutrient of the targeted animals if your herd is capable of managing multiple rations. Not all herds can do this. And then just practice good feed delivery and bunk management to reduce feeding errors and dry mire losses, or in other words, reduce the shrink every way you possibly can. And then don't forget about the heifers. Heifers are the future of your herd. Feed them top quality ingredients for long-term success. 
deliver high quality protein to help the heifers achieve the desired volumetric growth and stature. And be selective as to which replacements to keep. With the higher feed costs today, it's requiring more intense management and monitoring of our young heifers. And with beef prices where they are, If we have good records, we can call many of these young heifers that don't make the cut and put them into a beef program. So in summary, the five points are value feed ingredients for quality and consistency, identify the most limiting nutrient in your rations, make educated alfalfa decisions, improve feed bunk management and reduce stress, and don't forget about your heifers. You can find Dr. Boomer's article on ProgressiveDairy.com. Thank you. We would welcome you again. Thank you for the opportunity to visit with you today.